Let's take a look at a few more arguments that are going to help us get to this idea of logical form or patterns of argument. Consider the following argument. Abraham Lincoln was a politician. All politicians are liars. Therefore, Abraham Lincoln was a liar. Is that a good argument? Well, let's look at a couple of others also along the same lines. Kobe Bryant is a professional basketball player. All professional basketball players are tall. Therefore, Kobe Bryant is tall. Final example, let's take a look at. Stephen got an A. All students who got an A bribed the professor. Therefore, Stephen bribed the professor. Now the question is, are these good arguments? That's a trick question, so put your thinking caps on. In logic, when we're talking about good arguments, what are we talking about? Are we talking about validity? Or are we talking about something different? Well, we're talking about a sound argument. And for it to be a good argument, a sound argument, it has to have two things, right? Good logic, validity, and good premises. Now, what's interesting is, in the case of all of these arguments, there's a problem with the facts. And in all cases, it's the second premise. In all cases, in all three of our examples, it's the second premise. All politicians are liars. Well, if you take my view, most of them are liars, but you know, there probably was one or two who wasn't a liar, and maybe Lincoln was the example. All professional basketballs are players at all? Well, not all of them. We always, there are always a couple guys in the NBA who are uh, even shorter than me, which means they're short. You know, a couple guys 5'6", five, 5'7", five, so that's factually not a good basis. And all students who got an A bribed the professor. Well, maybe you think that one or two students bribe the professor and got an A, but other people do get an A without bribing the professor. They actually study, do the work, and put their thinking caps on. They think before they answer the questions. So are they good arguments? No, but that is they're not sound because they're problems with the factual basis. But the question that we're looking at is well-formed arguments. We're not, we are worried now not about whether it's a good argument, but whether the logic is good, whether the inference is good. And how are we going to determine that? Well, we just went through the method of counter example. I think we're going to see that these examples, like that last set of examples, are all going to be valid. That is, we're going to find out that we would end up contradicting ourselves in trying to describe a situation in which the premises are true and the conclusion is false. So keep in mind, we're not saying the arguments are good. That is, maybe they're not good. Maybe the second premise. But the logic of the inference in all of these is good. And let's turn to that. Let's take a closer look at the logic and the inference and the and the form and the pattern